Hey, what's up? Um, I hope that my computer can handle the live encoding and also playback at the same time. Let's find out. Okay, it's having some trouble with that, so we're going to be doing a lot of this stuff solo. Here's, um, this group is called Neuro Bass Shit. Okay, so there's a couple tracks to look at here. Um, this first one, this is just kind of like, um, uh, this is just kind of a, a, a trick where I have one automation lane for pitch bin data and then I route this throughout the rest of the track. So in Renoise we have this Hydra device where I can take this input and I can route it freely to anywhere else. So this is just a bunch of different tracks routing it to pitch bend on there. Uh, but then you can hear that like, uh, yeah, so like right here, this little pitch bend up that makes everything sound a little bit more ominous. So I can do that, and the reason I do that is because there are like four synths at minimum involved in this bass sound. So I've got buzzy, thick, and also thick. So buzzy is the one doing this. Thick is doing this. And also thick is doing this. Um, there's a lot of, and there's also sub, which is just, and then there's a couple of the things that are bussed together so that I can, uh, just so they get distorted along with the bass, so like this, then if I do all this together. I like the effect. And then uh, this sample is bust together as well. And you will recognize this from... Okay, there's a ton of processing on everything involved here, so I'm just gonna strip all this down. Let's see here, so from here, uh, on the master there's just a bus compressor. It's not doing a whole lot for the sound, but we can turn it off. Get some of that gain back. All right, let's, neuro bass shit. All right, let's, let's turn all this shit off. So, let's just go backwards. And then all of this shit on the sub two. Uh, I'm gonna leave this first device as an automation device, so I'm gonna leave that turned on, uh, so you can hear what this is like raw. I haven't listened to this raw in a while, so let's see what it says. You know, there's a lot that's coming from uh, other sources, but. Let's uh, so let's take a look at also thick here. So this is what cadmium looks like for this. So I'm automating the filter over here. Full drive, everything's getting fucking driven to shit. But then I'm automating some of the synthesis parameters too, and this is just kind of to give little timbral variations over time. I think. This. I don't think it's a variation. I think this. Oh, uh, it's. And then Buzzy is. I think I automate some of the synthesis parameters here. Uh, but I don't know where. Oh, yeah, down here. Okay, so this is kind of the main thrust of the track. Uh, let's take a look. At, you know what? We'll get to that in a second. Anyway, let's let's build these sounds back up. What is that fucking? Oh yeah, there's a there's a digital filter here that's getting automated around, and this is just a notch filter for. Uh, 
Oh, right, yeah. This is a notch filter that comes in for variation later on in the track. All right, let's build this up. We got a multiband. Exciter. Uh, Mid-side EQ, so this EQ curve is just on the side channel, and this is kind of to, like, narrow the sound in, uh, and then exaggerate, like narrow the sound in, in lows and low mids, and then exaggerate the stereo image in the highs. EQ, kind of cut this, this widen synth, what is this doing? So widen is chorus, and then I'm guessing this is a high pass, yeah, and then another side filter, another side EQ, so I can kind of kind of like a funky chorus. Uh, this is where a lot of fun came in. So I have these uh, impulse responses of like bass cabinets, like bass guitar cabinets. So this is what it sounds like 100% wet. Again, dry is 100% wet is. And remember, it's convolution, so this is linear. There's no saturation that's happening in there. That's all filtering. And then bring that in. A little bit of phasing, but it's nothing crazy. Uh, multi uh, multi with delay. Really quiet in the background. And then side pass is another, like, it's a high pass filter, but just on the side channel. I try to keep my stereo image really clean and kind of, you know, I try not to let low frequencies bleed into the stereo image all that much. Alright, let's take a look at this guy. Alright, multiband. Brings it a little bit more forward, but now there's too many mids, so we gotta, we gotta pull those down a little bit. Exciter. Base cap situations. Uh, side pass, one of these, you know, EQ or uh, uh, high pass on the side channel, and then another side EQ. That one's cool. I'm exaggerating the highs, but just in the side. Makes a big difference, though. All right, let's take a listen to this guy. Multiband. Just turn it up. Uh, now I'm guessing more mid cutting. Yeah. Cider. Really, I might have just duplicated this track early on, and then uh, and then kind of tuned it, like tuned the parameters of these effects, because you know it's a pretty like, not only is this kind of a standard set of effects, but if you watch any of the, like, big modern EDM producers, they will have similar chains on all of their basses or a lot of their sounds. It's multiband, distortion, some exciting, a lot of EQing, of course, but it's just kind of like building and refining a sound incrementally. So, like a little bit up top. You can hear the difference in that, uh, that sustained note here. Just a little bit. All right. Narrowing, you know, treatment. All right. All right. So here's the bus. All three of those bases are bussed together. And, um, I do this because, like, if you want things to sound like they belong together, you need to process them together. And this is why putting bus compressors on your drum bus or on your mix bus, this is why, um, this is why compression glues things together. Because if you process things together, then it sounds like they belong together. So, let's see here. Uh, if I recall correctly, this uh, this is a granular processor. This was used in an earlier version of the track. It was just kind of to... Um, uh, it was really short. 
grains, so it kind of put this like faux bit cr uh, faux rate reduction effect on it. Uh, this I'm not using here. This one gets turned on later in the track. We'll talk about that. There's an analog filter here. Most of the time, this really isn't doing a whole lot. So like, there's automation active here, but that's just because in the intro there's like a band pass. Here it's just, it's basically, it's there for a little bit of extra drive and I do automate the drive around. Uh, so like down here, smooth uh, distortion and um, so in my professional opinion having not uh, written this particular filter but this is just a stock renoise effect um, pretty much any like I'm pretty sure these are TPT filters because uh, this stuff showed up in a pretty recent version of renoise uh, this is just a two pole uh, cord modeled filter if you have a filter that does um, saturation and distortion internally, just drive it, and it like has a good character as a distortion. Way better than if you just had like a static um, nonlinearity. But like you can put a static nonlinearity as your nonlinearity in a filter, not even caring about like how uh, analog nonlinearities are not static. Just drive a filter and it'll sound good. Uh, all right, let's turn all these guys on so you can hear what this sounds like. Again, the analog filter is just doing drive duty here. A little bit of resonance bump, let's see. All right, uh, this is an all-pass filter. Didn't do a whole lot. Uh, Multiband. the sound forward uh, a little bit of tape sat uh, fatter just kind of like boosts the mids a little bit and like makes it like the louder thing makes it a shit ton louder I apologize all right cool so now it's way too many though but uh, density here uh, this is a, is a good one this is gonna be loud as shit Now we're going to filter the lows out. I didn't want to filter the lows out earlier. You saw there was this digital filter that did that because I want the lows to get distorted along with the rest of the signal. But now we've cleaned it up quite a bit. Uh, we got a compressor. What kind of compre like what kind of compression are we doing? Is it just bus compression? Uh, no, it's a uh, it's a mid side. It's just kind of bringing the level under control. We got an EQ right here. Ooh, look at that. Pretty good. This, uh, oh yeah, this is again like for the intro when I kind of fade the bass in. Uh, and I pan it around a little bit, but here. It's not doing anything. And there's a little bit of multi-tap delay, and that's just, I automate the feed forward. Uh, so I'm just, uh, I think it's this high. So there you go. All right, uh, in certain parts of the track, I turn on this digital filter, which is a an eight pole Chevy Chev uh, on notch filtering duty. And this kind of gives it this phasing sound. Check this out. If I turn the ripple up, it will exaggerate it considerably. Just there for a little bit of extra interest. This is a pretty standard uh, neuro bass trick, though. Have a couple notch filters and like automate them around. 
Easiest trick in the book. All right, um, let's take a look at the sub real quick. Pretty good sub. Uh, I like using Fathom 5, which is uh, it's an Air Windows plugin uh, for kind of emulating the way that bass blooms on tape. And the creator, uh, Chris, is pretty adamant that you should use it as like a send track, and you should just send a little bit of every track to it. Uh, but I just use it as a straight up audio effect. Like if I make it all wet, it, it just boosts the shit out of the bass. Uh, I've used it, you know, so like check this out. It, it's just a little bit, but like it does something. I like Fathom 5 a lot. It's not always super useful, but like I've used it on drum buses and shit before. It gets real dirty. Uh, yeah, I, I do a lot of cutting right around here. I don't know, like, I've been doing cuts around, like, 150, even deep ones, for the last, like, 10 years. Maybe it's why my tracks sound like shit. Um, but I've done this across many different rooms, across many different monitors. It's just, like, it's a thing that I prefer. It's like like 150 is this weird kind of like throaty bass type thing where it's like like a hundred and down a hundred hertz and down that's the bass that like like you feel it in your body you know like it hits you in your chest uh, if it's low enough and loud enough it'll like make your clothes vibrate and shit like that and I love that bass but then like a hundred up to two hundred is this like it's this like shrill bass that I don't like very much, and that's the it's it, that's that's the bass that like you feel like like you, you you kind of feel it, but it just like like for me it just resonates around in my head even at a show when it's really loud, and I hate it. I hate the way it feels, so I don't want it in my tracks. So that's why that's there. Uh, phase nudge again, all pass filter. <laughs> Uh, and then let me describe how this routing works. So originally I had uh, all of the bases, including the sub, compressed and bussed together uh, going out the end here. So let's take a listen. Cool, all right, so we've got a compressor. Is this a bus compressor or is this a program compressor? It's another program, I don't know. Cool. A little plate verb. Um, so it originally sounded like this. But I had a couple people tell me that it wasn't enough sub in it. But I really liked the effect of compressing all of the upper bases together with the sub. So what I did is I did that and then I filtered out the sub. And then I sent them both to the same bus. So I could more accurately control the level of sub. Cool. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about like rhythmic programming here. I think I'll be able to do this with the kick and the snare enabled. So what I did for a lot of this track is I would kind of like get a groove going with the kick and the snare. Pretty standard, right? Uh, but then I would put the sub in underneath it and I would kind of have the sub be doing similar things, like it would be playing into the rhythm. So once I had that, then I started filling it in and kind of like putting the upper notes on top of the lower notes. Some of these are, uh, oh yeah, we haven't even looked at the filter automation yet. Uh, all the filter automation was done by hand in this. So most of the motion here is coming from like the built-in cadmium filter, which is already being overdriven significantly, but yeah. saving um, a lot of this is just kind of trial and error it's about finding out what works nicely I find that when I'm doing these like neuro bass patterns I uh, I'll do too much 
like it'll be too busy and it like won't sound cool so i end up kind of taking my first attempt and then removing a bunch of shit and then my second attempt sounds better and then i'll like simplify it even further from there uh so there are a couple places in here like a lot of this is just the interplay between these three different bass tones <laughs> Cool. Um, let's get down to this main, this this kind of like chorusy, droppy type part here. So, a lot of layering. This is kind of doing the, the brunt of it, but then these other guys are... And then this is mostly, like, this is kind of the, this call and response section. The call is these big chords, and the response is... And again... Probably the coolest one, uh, it's this, man, where's the fucking... Yes, so there's this little segment here. Oh, that little, um, you know, this is some interplay as well, so if we listen to these individually. But yeah, it's kind of the same thing, and then just a lot of um, moving things around and kind of trial and error and experimentation. I didn't have any of this structured out in my head like before I went in, really, when it came to all of these, you know, funky stabby bits here. And a lot of it was, you know, an earlier version of this track, everything was more complicated. Uh, the sub was all over the place, and I think in a couple places it still is. Yeah, uh, a lot more than that. But then here, it's there's more contrast, there's more interplay. Um, I think that's kind of it from a from a bass sound design point of view. Everything else is just like found sounds or like there's this guy as well. My favorite part of this is that it's not a saw. It's. <laughs> It's the same patch over here. Close enough to a saw, though. There's all sorts of stuff that's just kind of like filling out the space, um, especially with the drums. We'll take a quick look at this because this is getting pretty long already. A lot of this came from this kind of main pattern here. Uh. Talk briefly. Um, so a friend of mine uh, named, you know, I'm gonna see how long I've been going on so far uh 25 minutes jesus christ okay uh i'll keep this really brief uh for the kick uh actually for both the kick and the snare i have a bunch of different layers and i layer them in time as well this is a friend of mine named pedestrian tactics he does this all over the place where i have kind of three or four different modulation buses um so like for the snare uh i'm gonna turn all of this down so 
I have the transient body and tail, and the transient sounds like that. The body uh, sounds like that, and the tail is this. And everything together sounds really cool. And then of course I distort the shit out of it afterwards, but it lets me kind of mix in different, uh, uh, so like all of these on their own. Not all that great, some of them, but you know, all comes together pretty nicely. It's the same deal with the kick, it's a couple different kicks. Here's some other fun stuff that I do. I'll, you know. This, uh, this little SO4 over here, this is playing it in an offset, so you'll see. Just, you know, get some variation in there. I think I did the layering trick with the hats, too. Yeah, but... You know. Some shakers. Uh, and then just compress the shit out of everything when you're done with it. All right, last thing I'm gonna go over um, is small space impulse responses. I use these all over the place. So for example, on the drums, uh, here's what the drums sound like dry. Uh, so I've got a washing machine. Really quiet, really in the background, but kind of brings everything together. You know what, I'm going to turn all this compression back on. So this, I think, is parallel compression. Uh, yes. Distortion. Much more aggressive compression. Tape, and then more tape. All right, so now if I turn these convolvers back on, uh, they will be more pronounced. All right, car radio wide. What was this? Oh, another bass cabinet, I guess. Yep. And then an actual reverb. Again process things together that should go together. Uh, I think that's I think that's all I'm going to cover. Uh, let me know if there was a particular sound you would like me to cover that I did not. Take it easy, y'all.